basically it's a tournament where all the best players in the world from different countries and everything come in the same room and play the game that we all love. I am Jay Spiller. And I am Stoneforge Mystic. It's just a really amazing game. It's just mind-boggling to even think about. I guess the rest is history. Hi, my name is Bernie Wen, and I'm here with my Blue Red Delver Burn deck. It's a, a Blue Red deck that showcases uh, Delver of Secrets, which is a one drop for a 1-1. One, one. During your upkeep, you can look at the top card of your library. If it's an instant or sorcery, you can flip it. And in my opinion, it's one of the best aggressive creatures ever printed. A lot of times, it's one for a 3-2 you can swing on turn two with a 3-2 flyer. Not only is it a 3-2, it also has evasion. And to complement uh, Delver Secrets, my deck runs 21 to 22 spells. And it also, you can set it up with uh, the four ponders. So it's an aggressive deck with some counter spells, four mana leaks for permission. And it's, the permission is there basically to uh, establish a threat and protect your threat. Uh, very similar to like a rug tempo deck from Legacy. And then it has a lot of burn. The burn is for removal and also gives the deck reach. And also, in my opinion, one of the best things you can be snapcasting back is a burn spell. If you snapcast back an incinerate, it's four mana for a two one and deal three damage to target player or creature. But most times you want to go to the dome because it's an aggressive deck. So some of the creatures that accommodate Delver are Stromkirk Noble, which is a three of main deck, Grim Lava Mancer, three of main deck, and Chandra's Phoenix, three of main deck. The Chandra's Phoenix is a two two flyer with haste. It gives you a recurring threat. If a deck doesn't play Celestial Purge or O-Ring, you're eventually going to get her back. Just because you, that's what the burn is there for, to trigger Chandra's and also to you know give the deck reach and removal. But Chandra's is a recurring threat, and as a 2-2 flyer, and flying actually is really relevant right now. Um, the Moreland Hunt tokens are 1-1 flyers, so it blocks them all day. It just eats up all the Moreland Hunt tokens and also trades with the Flip Delver. Lava Mancer is super relevant right now. Um, his only drawback is that you need fuel in your graveyard. But right now, against all the popular decks, mainly Illusions, it removes all of your creatures. One activation of it removes everything except for Geist of St. Trout. Stromkirk Noble is a very aggressive creature. If you get it on turn one and you connect with it, a lot of decks just can't deal with that. I mean, Vapor Snack is a, is a card, but against Control, if they don't deal with it quick enough, I mean, that's approximately about 6 to 10 damage. And it's also super relevant, his uh, ability that can't be blocked by uh, humans. So it's actually a really good card against Blue Eye Humans. They don't have a ton of removal. The removal is O-Rings and Fiend Hunters, which, which come out turn 3, but none of their cards can block except for their Moreland Hunt tokens and... Uh, there are spirit tokens from Doom Traveler. There are two cards in this deck that give you card advantage, so to speak. One is uh, Snapcaster Mage. When it flashes something back, you get a 2-1 body for free. It's pretty mana intensive, but overall it's a really good card. But uh, with Desperate Ravings, it's draw two, discard one at random. But if you set it up correctly, it's really draw two fresh cards and discard a random card. So say you know, you're flooded, but you have a... That's for Raven, because that can get you out of the situa situation. You're drawing two fresh cards, and you're discarding a card at random. And if you're just holding your excess lands, the probability of discarding a land goes up. So you're drawing two fresh cards. And that's from one activation as flashback, so you can do it again. And at worst, it's really just a bad divination. Anytime I'm playing this deck, I would love to see uh, any Primeval Titan deck. I mean, I think that's part of the reason Primeval Titan decks are out of metagame, is because they just get crushed by these Delver decks, which are just aggro control. They land a quick threat and have counter backup. Like a turn one Delver, it flips on maybe turn two, turn three, maybe turn even turn the next turn. And you're just holding Mana Leak. And you Mana Leak their first play, which you don't Mana Leak their uh, ramp or anything like that. You just Mana Leak their threats. And then you can buy back the Mana Leak with a Snapcaster. And also, um, I think Illusions, as it is right now, is also a pretty good matchup. Uh, all your removal is live. Their only removal is Gutshot. Gutshot only deals with Delver before it flips, Stromkirk before it hits. It deals with Grim Lavamancer, 
but that's a card they have to deal with or they just lose. After sideboard, when I bring in the shrines, uh, I turn them more into a control deck. I mean, I would say it's maybe 50-50, depending on their Moreland Haunt draws. Like, Moreland Haunt is a card that gives them their card advantage, but they can't really deal with a shrine, and also Desperate Ravings gives me card advantage, which is a war of attrition, so towards the end of the game, if anyone floods out, if they flood out, they're just going to lose. If I flood out, I can hold my lands and Ravings for two fresh cards, and the probability of discarding a land goes up a lot if you just hold your lands after, say, your fifth or sixth, probably fifth land. A matchup that I'm not too confident in, in is uh, Blue-White Humans. Once they get an Honor of the Pure in play, none of my removal really deals with any of their creatures. Hero Blade Hold is a hard creature to deal with. I mean, one of the positives about playing this deck over, say, a deck with Doomblade as a removal, I can easily deal with a Mirror Crusader. When, if you're playing Esper Control, uh, Mirror Crusader is just so hard to deal with. You get to kill with either O-Ring, which is, they're getting even on the trade as a three mana sorcery to deal with a three mana creature, or Day of Judgment. And it gets a good player, you know, if they already have a board established, they can just hold mana leak. And, but I feel like that's a bad matchup just because uh, their creatures are just better. And my removal is kind of blanked. A lot of my sideboard are one ofs, and the, but the one ofs are just to add more consistency to the deck. They're actually to make it be four like Snapcasters in the main deck four Strong Creature Nobles in the main deck, four Lava Masters in the main deck, because I have one of each in the sideboard. And depending on the matchup, uh, Grim Lava Master is really good. Sometimes he's, he's not. He's not very good against control, so you want to side him out. But Strong Creature Nobles is really good against Blue Eye Humans. You want to you know, max out on uh, your Strong Creature Nobles. And in, in, against decks where attrition matters, you want to side in your Snapcaster Mages. And in Snapcaster, if you draw like two in your opening hand, a lot of times it's a 2-1 with flash because you're not having the requisite amount of spells in your graveyard for it to get full value. So sometimes you don't want to draw that many Snapcasters. Active Aggression is in there for against Blue-Eyed Humans to bring in against, or any deck with Hero Blade Hold, and also you can bring it against uh, Primeval Titan decks. But basically, it's in there for Hero Blade Hold. Before I had a Dismember in the sideboard, I mean, Dismember deals with Hero Blade Hold pretty well. But it also, you know, cost four life because I don't have any black sources. But with active aggression, it still costs four life. But most of the time, they're on their back heels, and you know they're trying to conserve their life total. I mean, they bring in the timelies, etc. Because I'm the aggro deck in that matchup. And if they, you know, play hero and think they're all right, you can tap, steal hero. It'll pump all your guys, and a lot of times you can swing for the win. The reason I started playing this deck was because. I thought it was a better matchup against Blue Eyed Humans. That, when I mentioned before that it's a bad matchup, I actually don't know. I mean, I couldn't beat Blue Eyed Humans with uh, Esper Control. It just had too many threats and they had a counter magic backup. I feel like this deck has a, in that matchup, it would play the role of aggro. And I think that's a better strategy than trying to control the game. I would say, I mean, if you're a person who likes risk and variance in your games, this is a fun deck to play just because there's a lot of variance with Delver. If you play a first turn Delver and you blind flip them, you're pretty much going to win the game. And also with Ravings, uh, a lot of times you draw two fresh cards and you hope that it doesn't hit your key card. So there's a lot of luck in that. And also it's just a fun deck to play. Uh, it's fast. It's got reach with burn and it's got counter magic. What's not to like? Grasp of Darkness is two black mana for an instant to give target creature minus four minus four until end of turn.